Hello everyone, welcome to Zeref Game Dev. In this uh, course, we are going to create the Connect game, uh, which is the most difficult game to create. Uh, I did know after I created it, and it's a pretty simple game, as you can see. Uh, we'll start by exploring from the start screen, so that's just one button and after that we are going to choose one of the levels and it will take us to the level so it is a simple grid based game where we create a flow from uh, one tile to another and what we are going to create in this course is uh, how to create both of these scenes and uh, how to generate multiple levels and all the levels are uh, just inside one scene we are going to create all the levels through our uh, scriptable objects and our scriptable objects are stored inside a different folder which uh, we are going to generate automatically from our level generator and our level generator has a, um, automatic generation turned on so when we hit play it is going to generate all of our levels and as you can see we can see all of our levels generating so that's how we are going to create our uh, simple game and uh, let's see how it is going to look so we have uh let's set the speed multiplier to thousand and we will just uh, show only the results so let's see what levels we are going to have generated so if we click simulate as you can see we are having multiple levels and this is just the first default solution for free cross 3 if you watch the tutorial whole course sometime after we'll have some more visualizations and also the gameplay setup is pretty easy uh, the most difficult part is going to be creating our levels as they are more complicated and if you are watching on youtube you can get the course completely free on youtube and if you are watching on udemy uh, thank you for buying the course and uh, the more uh, the different from both of the courses uh, the Udemy one is going to have my design files so it is just the notes I write when I create the games and the YouTube one is going to have all the videos and the project files which are on my github link and uh, do follow my YouTube channel there will be more such videos coming on and if you want to start something simple then you can follow the simple hyper casual playlist it is uh, pretty much better if you are a beginner and you can get it completely free for my youtube uh, uh, channel and if you want to support me or uh, buy the course if you liked it to go as it is good then you can buy the course and let's start creating let's start with the project setup and let's see what we can do so the first thing we are going to do is uh, change our build settings to android and after that we'll rearrange our project structure so it will take a couple of seconds Compiling C hash scripts and it will be done. So it is done. Our project has been set to Android and we aren't going to do anything. Uh, so let's rename our sample scene to main menu and load the scene 
and similarly we'll create a new scene and we'll save the scene inside our scenes folder and we'll call this gameplay and we'll add our gameplay scene to the build so we have our current two scenes and after our gameplay and our scenes folder will uh, create our folder which is going to hold our project so we are going to have uh, more folders uh, in which our project folder is uh, going to be inside there and inside our project folder we have our scenes next we are going to have a folder to store our scripts and finally one more folder to store our prefabs and uh, as you can see our project has our gameplay and the main menu scene and uh, the whatever it is going to require it is going to require from here and let's go inside player settings and inside our player setting let's import the text mesh pro essentials and uh, let's disable our mm, tool chain management okay so the tool chain management is already not there and we'll disable the warnings and after that let's go inside our package manager and we'll reassign our packages so we don't need the jet prints rider editor We also don't need the test framework timeline UI we don't need version control and also we don't need the visual scripting and the VS code editor and till that is happening so let's remove the visual scripting and also our vs code editor so these are only the four packages we are going to need and uh, this game was already pretty complicated depending on the coding part so i uh, didn't use much animations and particle effects but uh, if you want to extend it you can do whatever you like with it so any tags and layers we are not going to use uh, inside our script execution order maybe we'll need to uh, do something later but uh, we are not going to change anything here and uh, let's go inside our editor and the default naming will uh, have it use underscore so for now we don't need anything for the project and also the build and as you can see uh, not the simulator instead of free aspect we'll uh, have it use portrait mm, this is how our current structure is going to look and also create one more folder for our external assets and this external assets i created uh, if you want to have any plugins uh, like uh, dot tween lean tween or any external assets we are going to use so that was for that and let's bring in our uh, resources which are going to be our fonts sounds and uh, hmm. so resources so it is going to include uh, the fonts the sounds and the sprites so just one font and the sprite we have all uh, of them and also we are going to include the editor folder which uh, includes um, we will need to which includes all the color schemes so as you can see we have all these colors and uh, let's create our common folder so it is going to have all the common assets that we are going to require which are the level list and let's create one for the prefabs and one more for our scripts 
and inside our prefabs we are going to create one more folder for our levels and uh, inside our scripts we'll need to create an assembly definition and we'll call this connect dot common so as you can see the name is connect dot common and uh, assembly definition references we are going to need uh, some references here so it is uh, I think uh, it doesn't need any references but it's going to have its own code and we are going to use scriptable objects here so let's also change the namespace so we can use the default namespace which is going to be connect dot uh, core and for our core it is going to be inside our project and the scripts so assembly definition reference assembly definition uh, no we don't need this we need a assembly definition so the script says the connect dot common and uh, project settings and inside mm, editor where was it scene template player i think uh, it was inside the visual studio but uh, we'll see it later so let's add our assembly definition references first and uh, we are going to have inside our assets one more folder for our level generator which is going to have its own assembly definition reference assembly definition and we'll call this connect dot generator and as you can see the naming here it is connect dot generator and uh, uh, let's just create those references first and when we code we'll uh, see uh, what references uh, uh, what else references are they going to need and similarly inside our project and uh, scripts folder we are going to create one more assembly definition and this is going to be connect.core so this is our core gameplay where most of our project is going to have and uh, this is our prefabs these are the two scenes the level generator is also going to have one more scene but uh, we'll create this afterwards and uh, that should be it for our uh, project setup and the next part we'll uh, start creating the basic uh, layout of our main menu and will create the scriptable objects so they are just pretty simple the list list of ends but uh, uh, instead of having double list uh, will specify a type so we can edit them so we have our uh, we need to go inside our main menu scene and we'll start by setting up our main menu scene so as you can see the first thing it is going to have is the color of our main camera we already have the background to be perfectly white and after that let's create a ui and it is going to be an image and we'll call this title image and the title image is going to have our title image sprite and uh, we'll use set as native size and let's set up our canvas so we'll have it attached to screen space camera attach the main camera scale with screen size 1080 by 2160 and we'll have it match the height and again our title image is uh, set to native size so let's decrease its size to 768 by 768 and our background it's going to be our yellowish color 
and uh, that was just the default white which is going to be triple f 96 and that should be our background and our camera is set up and after that we'll attach a text which is going to be our title text so let's create a ui text and we'll call this title text and our title text is going to be 10 to 4 by 5 and 2 positioned at 640 and the text it is going to call is connect will have it centered the color is going to be the dark color and the size we are going to use is uh, 160 and let's use our text which is inside our fonts and we'll position it to the center so that's where our title screen is going to be and after having our title screen we are going to have one more image which is going to be our play button and the play button is going to be positioned at negative 640 size is going to be 512 by 160 and the image is going to be why is it small square slice 16 so this is going to be an image we'll set its color to be the dark color and inside that we are going to have a text which is going to say play and the color is going to be 626262 let's attach a button component whose transition is none and let's attach a text component which is just calling play and uh, the size is going to be 96 and mm, the alignment is going to be centered and the color is going to be our bright color and let's have our font to be a word sand so this is our starting panel and we'll align all of them to a start panel and will parent all three of them to the start panel and our start panel is as you can see at the center and everything is perfectly sized we are not going to have it stretch but uh, for the difficulty panel and the level panel we'll need to stretch it across somewhere so this is just our default start screen now let's create our main menu manager and then our game manager and finally our sound manager and all three of them are going to need a, uh, need the respective scripts so let's create all of our scripts so the first script we are going to create is our game manager script then we'll create our gameplay manager script and after that we we'll, are going to need a main menu manager script and we are going to need more scripts game manager gameplay manager mm, we uh, level button script and after our level button script we are also going to have a node script uh, it is going to be used inside our uh, gameplay scene that's the only script there is and after that we are going to need two more scripts for our sound manager and finally our uh, stage button So we have all of our scripts and inside our assembly reference, uh, assembly definition reference, 
we are going to need a reference to our unity dot text mesh pro hmm. so these are the tests we are not going to provide any tests and also a reference to our connect dot our common cause it is going to have our two scriptable objects uh, nothing more and inside our project settings for the script execution order we'll attach our game manager first and after that our main menu manager and our sound manager are going to run uh, so that was it and uh, inside our common and the scripts let's hit apply we are going to create two more scripts which are going to be for our level data and level list so let's create our first script which is going to be level data and our level data is just going to have a list of uh, edges and each edge is going to be a list of positions and the positions are going to be a vector to of integers so as you can see it is pretty deep so you can call however you like and let's start by so everything's looking fine our main menu manager is also looking how i want it to be and uh, we need to attach the script so the main menu manager is going to have a main menu manager script attached the game manager is going to have a game manager script attached and our sound manager is going to have a sound manager with an audio source script attached so as you can see our uh, main menu is always all already starting to look good and uh, we'll need to edit our script so we'll do that in the next part and uh, we'll start coding our scriptable object and our sound manager we'll create our sound manager and our uh, scriptable objects and uh, we'll create uh, two of the default levels so first we have our level data which is uh, by default it inherits from the mono behavior so what we'll do is uh, we'll first attach a namespace and we'll use connect dot common and it is not necessary to use namespace as it's uh, having its own uh, assembly reference but uh, we'll use it and instead of mono behavior we are going to inherit from the scriptable object and we'll need to create a menu and inside our create asset menu we'll pass our file name to be first uh, the default will start by level and we'll need to create our uh, menu name which is our menu path so it is going to be inside scriptable objects under slash level and what our level data is going to have so it is going to have a public string for our level name and a public list which is going to be of uh, uh, different type and we'll need to create that type first and let's create a system dot serializable public struct and we'll call this edge and here we are going to have a public list of edge which is going to be edges and our individual edge is going to be a public list of vector to integer which is going to be our points 
and after that we are going to have a public v2 int and we need to get the start point and we are going to have a getter and a setter and first we'll use a return new vector to int and if we are having any issues then it will return a negative one else what we'll do is uh, we'll check if our points dot count is greater than zero uh, points is not equal to null and our points dot count is greater than zero then we'll return points of zero and similarly with a starting point it is going to need an ending point so let's rename this to end point and we don't need it to null and uh, the count here should be yeah greater than zero and instead of uh, points dot count minus one it will return the last one and that should be our edge so we just need the starting and the ending point and uh, we just directly coded it up here we could uh, use like edge dot points but uh, we can directly get it as edge dot start point and edge dot end point and this is going to be our level data and we had it serializable so when we create a new scriptable object we are going to have it already uh, we can like pass the integer values and similarly uh, our level list let's use our namespace and it is going to be connect.common and we'll put our class inside and our level list is going to inherit from scriptable object and we need to have it accessible so create asset menu and our file name is going to be equal to levels and our uh, menu name is going to be equal to uh, scriptable object under slash all levels so the first one was uh, creating our single level and here we'll pass a public list of level data and we'll just call this uh, levels and we'll set it up uh, directly so uh, it is going to be set it up inside the inspector and after having our level list and level data let's create some default levels and also let's add our sound manager so public static sound manager instance inside our awake if our instance is equals to null we need to have this capital then our instance is going to be this uh, don't destroy and load the game object and we'll return else we'll destroy the game object and it is going to have one function so private uh, audio source and we'll call this effect source and we'll create a public method to play the sound by passing an audio clip and we'll call this clip and here what we'll do is effect source dot play one shot and we'll pass the clip so the current uh, autocorrect is not autocorrect the autofill is too good and we don't need to do too many things and that was our sound manager our level list and the level data now let's go inside unity and we'll need to create some levels 
and we'll start by going inside our prefabs and the levels and as you can see we have starting and the first level is going to be our default level and the default level name we are going to have as default level and the number of edges uh, let's have it one and the points currently it has zero and let's add our first point so it is at zero zero and let's add the end point so it will be at uh, let x to be one and y to be four low free solutions so let me see which was the easiest one so inside the flow the regular and that was the first solution so the first uh, was at uh, one zero and uh, zero four so let's add that one zero and zero four now let's add one more uh, uh, edge and this edge is going to have one one and the end is going to be at two four now similarly we need one more edge and here it is going to be at two zero and the ending is going to be at mm, two three and uh, let's create one more edge and it's starting is going to be at three zero and ending is going to be at uh, four three similarly we'll create our last edge which starting is going to be at three one and the ending is going to be at four four so as you can see these are our edges but uh, it just uh, shows our starting and the ending position and inside our prefabs let's create a scriptable object for our all levels and by default we forgot to add the level list we are just going to create it once so it has the levels and inside our levels uh, we are going to add our default level so we need to lock our levels and add our default level so our level list is storing all of our levels and each of our level is stored inside our uh, levels folder so these are the prefabs and uh, we are going to use this prefabs here and we didn't need any assembly references and our sound manager which should be inside our script so let's unlock it and we are going to need the audio source so we create the scriptable object to store our levels uh, we have our starting panel already set up we'll uh, in the next part we'll start coding up our game manager maybe yeah let's start with the game manager cause it is going to have just scripting part and after that we'll start with our uh, main menu manager which is uh, just going to be switching panels and setting up the colors so we created our scriptable objects and our sound manager in the previous part so and we'll start by creating our game manager so let's go inside visual studio and uh, let's start editing our game manager the first thing we are going to need is our game manager instance and inside our awake we need to set our instance is equals to this if our instance is not null and we don't need to destroy on the load game object and we need to return else we need to destroy our game object and that's how we are going to create our game manager so pretty simple and uh, we need to initialize which uh, we need to create a function which is just going to initialize our uh, current stage and everything mm -hmm. 
so let's create a private void and in it and inside our init we are going to create our game variables hmm, hmm. so before that uh, we'll need a region so this one is going to be for our scene load and in our scene load what we'll do is uh, private found string main menu is going to be equal to main menu and private found st string gameplay it is going to equal to gameplay and we'll create a public method for go to main menu so inside our go to main menu we'll just unity engine dot scene management dot scene manager dot load scene and we'll pass our main menu and inside our go to gameplay will need the load scene for the gameplay and we are not having any uh, we'll need the namespace so let's do that and find breakpoint snippet surround with namespace and we'll call this connect.core Okay, so it is connected by namespace game manager our scene load region is complete and This is going to be for our start methods And at the initialization will declare the end region And we are also going to need one more region not here so let's create a region and here we are going to get our level data and let's set a region and the first thing is going to be serialized field private level data and it automatically include connect.common and our default level and i didn't think we'll need to add it the list there okay so it doesn't matter hmm, hmm, hmm. so we don't need to have the default levels <coughs> Let's create a serialized field, serialized field, private level list, and we'll call it under slash all levels. And after that, we are going to have a private dictionary which goes from string to level data. <coughs> and we'll just call this uh, levels. <coughs> and after that we'll need to create a public level data from getting the level and to get the level we need to know what is our current stage and our current level and by default let's return our default level else we'll uh, need to get that level and for getting that level we need to store it inside the variables and we are going to need one more region for that so 
the first variable is going to be our uh, current stage then our second variable is going to be our current level and after that I did inspector mm, not public string our current name and instead of current name we'll call this stage name <coughs> And our public goal is level unlocked. And we need to pass an integer for the level. What we'll do is we'll create a level name. And it is going to be equal to level plus current stage dot to string plus current level dot to string and instead of current level we will use level <clears throat> so suppose we are inside our first stage and one of the levels and we only have seven stages so it should be fine and what we'll do is uh, if our level is equals to one that means it is the default level will return true and player preps dot set int our level name to one else uh, we don't need an else condition if player prefs dot has key level name so if it has that key then we return player prefs dot get int and we need to pass the level name and we'll check if it is one and if it does not have then we'll set the level name to zero and we return false and similarly we'll do public void unlock level and inside our unlock level we'll create a level name depending on our current level and the current stage and after that we'll mm, mm, mm. okay okay so we need to unlock 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 why do we need to unlock so it was already unlocked uh, we need to unlock the next level okay so we need to increase the level count by one and if our level count is equals to 51 then our current level is going to be one and our current stage is going to be increased but if our current stage is equals to 8 then uh, our current stage is equals to 1 and we'll go to the main menu so if this happens our current level is going to 1 and similarly we'll set up our current stage and we'll unlock it which should be player preps dot set in level name two one and that should unlock our current level 
and after that inside our level data we'll need to so the game variables are set up uh, we need to set the level data so inside our get level we need to again create our level name and let's pass it here hide our game variables and after getting our level name if uh, levels dot contains key for the levels name then we'll return levels for the levels name hmm. so it will give us our level name and that should be it for the get level and inside our start init method we need to set up our dictionary so our current stage needs to be one doesn't matter and our current level is going to be one and our levels is going to be a new dictionary and for each item inside all of our levels dot levels uh, will do levels and of item dot level name to be equal to item so it will create our dictionary and that was the init method and that's only it for our game manager and after that we'll need to start creating the main menu manager and let's go inside unity and let's see what our game manager has to offer so we'll just need the default level and all of our levels so we'll need to remove that but our level list will be empty and our level list should not be empty so we'll need to take care of that so that was just the basic game manager setup we could have added those functions later but it is better to create the functions first so the functions we created where well, let's go through again inside our start method we initialized where we set our levels dictionary so we can directly get the level inside our scene load we added the scene loading inside our level data we created a function to get the level and it is dependent on our current stage and the current level and our stage name i think uh, our main menu needed that somewhere so that's why it was here and that should be it so we'll create our main menu manager in the next part so we have our game manager set up and to use our main menu manager we need to set up all of our panels which are going to use the prefabs for the levels and the stages so as you can see this is going to be our start panel and after that we are going to have two more panels which is going to be our what is pressed right now there's something okay so now it is looking good so let's create an empty and this is going to be our difficulty panel and let's start by creating our difficulty panel so let's hide our strike panel start panel and the first thing it is going to have is a title and also a button so let's create an empty and we'll call this title and the title is just going to say the name which is going to be connect and the alignment is going to be stretch from the top left and right is zero the position is negative 160 
and the uh, height is going to be 320 and we'll attach an image component to it and the difficulty panel will have it stretch and for the color we are going to use the blue color so let's add an image component not here uh, for the image component we are going to use the blue color and the sprite we are going to use our pixel sprite so as you can see this is our starting panel and inside our title we are going to need a text and let's delete this text from here <clears throat> so let's create a ui text and the text is just going to be connect and we don't need any positioning just the size is going to be 128 the font we are going to use a board let's have it align position it to the center and that should be good and for the color we are going to use uh, our light color or maybe white so let's just use it white so it looks better and after that we are going to have back to title and it is going to include an image which is inside our sprites and the image is going to be the arrow left and the size is going to be 128 by 128 and the color mm, it is going to be white and the position it is going to be from the top x is going to be 80 and y is going to be negative 160 so as you can see it is already looking like the back button and it also going to need a button component where we set the tint to none so we don't need any transitions and uh, it's button function it's going to be inside our main menu manager now finally what we are going to have is a, a list of buttons and we'll need to attach it inside a vertical layout group so let's create an empty and we'll call this our difficulty content and for the size uh, let's go here we'll 1080 by 1840 and we'll position it negative 160 so as you can see it aligned perfectly inside the screen and what we'll do is we'll add a vertical layout group and for the padding we are going to use 64 and the child alignment is going to be upper center so padding and spacing both are going to be 64 and uh, we don't need to expand the width and inside this vertical layout group let's create our first empty and we'll call this stage and we'll save it as a prefab but uh, let's create a uh, first of our stage so vertical layout group it has a upper center mm, but our stage has different issues so we don't need to change that but uh, what we need to add is the size 888 by 192 and as you can see it is already looking good and we need to add an image component which has our uh, square slice 16 and our starting color let's set it our blue color and it is going to have a stage button script and also a text so let's create a ui and text and it is just going to call novice a uh, this is our default let's set to 96 and the transform is going to scale and the positioning is going to be the center the color already it's the default white color and the font we are going to use our both sans font 
and we'll save our state as a prefab inside our prefabs folder and uh, let's delete this stage and we are going to have multiple stages which is going to be seven so let's add it to the difficult content again and we'll use underscore one and let's duplicate them seven times so this are our seven stages uh, for now i'm not going to change anything here but uh, after we create our main menu manager and all of our colors will change that now our level panel is going to be similar so we'll rename it to level panel and we'll hide our difficulty panel and inside our level panel the title is going to be red so we can have some change and the size it's going to be perfect instead of back to title we'll call this back to stage and 96 negative 192 Hmm. One to eight by one to eight, and so text was similar. Uh, white and our level content is going to have a grid layout group, and we are going to delete all of it, and also remove. And here we are going to have a grid layout group and inside our grid layout group the padding is going to be 32 64 32 the sizing is going to be uh, 1 to 144 by 144 the start corner is going to be upper left uh, child alignment is going to be upper center and why is this so we'll rename our difficulty content to our level content and similarly it is going to have a level so let's create an empty and we'll call this level and it already fixed this uh, transform so we don't need to do anything for the image we'll use the square slice 16 uh, maybe yeah so we are going to use the square slice 16 and for now color let's use the red color and similarly it is going to have a level button script and we need a text so let's create a ui text text mesh pro let's have it align the whole screen and the text will have it centered and we'll use auto size the minimum uh, let's set the text to one and font and color it is going to be white let's set the minimum to 32 and maximum to 72 so the maximum is going to be 50 and as you can see it is uh, showing up so 72 is already good enough so we'll just use one so that was our level prefab and we'll save it as a prefab and delete it from the scene and we are going to need uh, 50 of those levels and only thing we need to do is uh, duplicate them uh, 50 times 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 so we'll do it till we reach 50 and there we have it and our start corner is going to be upper left horizontal child alignment it is going to be upper center 
and our uh, back to stage uh, it is a little bit uh, higher and the title the text is going to be different so uh, we are inside our novice a and the size we already increased it to 128 let's have it 90 128 so why is it not looking good enough yeah it is fine so that is our level content and let's hide it uh, let's code our main menu manager so why doesn't our title play so our game manager is set up so let's hit play and let's see if any of the scripts is working so it is working perfectly fine that was just some minor issue and what we'll do is uh, we'll start coding up our main menu manager so let's go inside visual studio and let's see where we need to start So we are going to need a public uh, static main menu manager instance. And a serialized field for our private game object. And the first is going to be our uh, title panel. Okay, so it added some autocorrect. The next one is going to be our stage panel, and the final one is going to be our level panel. <coughs> and inside our awake, we'll set the instance to this. title panel dot set active to false similarly stage and level panel dot set active to false so it did a pretty good job of auto completing it and when we click play so public void click the play what we are going to do is a title panel to false and our uh, stage panel to true and when we click back to title so public void click back to title uh, title panel is going to be true and our stage panel is going to be false and similarly we are going to go from back to stage so public void click back to title forward to title now click the back to stage and here our stage panel is going to be turned off and our level panel also needs to be turned off so we'll show our stage panel and after that let's create a unity action so unity action and it is going to be level opened so when our level is going to open we need to change the title text which is uh, there so it shows different level names and we'll use a hidden inspector for a public color and we'll use current color and after that a serialized field and private TMP text 
and our text is going to be level title text and serialize field private image level title image and our public void click stage so whenever we click a stage we will pass a string for our stage name and a color for our stage color and what we'll do is uh, first we'll set the stage panel to off then we'll show a level panel and after showing our level panel we'll set our current color which is going to be our stage color similarly our level title text text is going to be stage name and our level title image dot color is going to be our current color and we'll call our uh, level opened so we open the level and we'll invoke that and that's it for our main menu manager and the next part will uh, start coding up our um, level button and the stage button and logically both of uh, our script should work perfectly fine so let's add our title panel our stage panel our level panel and also our level image and our level text and uh, we need to attach the functions so for our play did I change? Yeah. So for our play, we should have the main menu manager dot click the play. So we can go to our difficulty panel. Inside our difficulty panel, for our title, not for our title. For our back to title, we are going to have our click the back to title, and similarly inside our level panel, we are going to have click the back to stage. And let's see if there are any errors. So we should see our start panel first, and both of them are working perfectly fine and our buttons have uh, didn't have the functions attached so let's uh, do that in the next part so we'll create uh, both of our button scripts in the next part so we need to set up our uh, stage button and our uh, level button so let's start by opening up our uh, stage button first mm. and let's go inside visual studio so our stage button is going to have its own parameters so the first thing we are going to need is a serialize field and here we are going to have a stage name serialize field and a stage color and serialize field private int and this is going to be our stage number and also serialize field private button and we'll just call this button and what we'll do is uh, inside our awake will set button dot add button dot on click dot add listener and we'll need to create a listener which is going to be private void click the button and whenever button is clicked 
what we are going to do is game manager dot instance dot our current stage is going to be equal to our stage number and our game manager dot instance dot stage name is going to be our stage name and main menu manager dot instance dot click the stage and we'll pass in our uh, stage name and our stage color and why did we add the name inside our game manager i don't know but uh, maybe we'll use it so find all references mm. so it is just only there and i don't think we'll ever need it and here we'll pass our click the button so it is listening to the click the button and that should be it and i suppose we don't need the stage name but uh, let's just leave as it is and now let's create our level button so level button is going to be more hectic and it is going to have a little bit more parameters but again it's going to simple nothing to complicate it so level data level list and then we are going to have our level button so serialized field private button and we'll call this button and then our serialized field private image and we'll call this image and serialized field private tmp text and this is going to be our level text and our serialized field private color and this is going to be our inactive color and private bool for is level unlocked and our private integer for our current level and we'll set it up inside the awake on enable and on disable So inside our awake, we need to set our button function. So button dot on click dot add listener, and we need to create a listener which will just call it clicked. And inside our click, what we are going to do if uh, our level is unlocked. then we'll return if it is not unlocked then we'll return else game manager dot instance dot why oh, is it the game manager we need the game manager dot instance dot uh, i forgot to add the namespace current level is going to be current level and game manager dot instance dot go to gameplay and uh, it added the current core what we need to do is uh, snippets around with namespace and it is going to be connect dot core and similarly inside our namespace we need to surround it with connect dot core um, uh, where it is snippets around with connect control k control s 
doesn't matter namespace and we'll call the connect dot core and similarly for our main menu manager control k control s namespace connect dot core and also our game manager is already inside our sound manager already control k control s namespace connect dot core and enter <clears throat> so it is using connect dot common uh, it is already inside the connect dot core inside connect dot core and connect dot core so we'll set the current level and just directly go to the gameplay scene and on enable and on disable main menu manager dot instance dot level open plus is equals to level open so we are going to create its a uh, subscriber here and it is going to be a private void level opened and inside our level open so let's first get our game object name and it is going to be game object dot name and string parts is going to be game object dot name but here we are going to split with underscore and our level text uh, text is going to be parts at a parts dot length minus one so it is going to be the last one and our current level is going to be equal to end dot parse and it is going to be our level text dot text both are similar doesn't matter and our is level unlock is going to be game manager dot instance dot is level unlocked and will pass our current level hmm. Hmm. so we'll set the image dot color and it is going to be if our level is unlocked then we'll get the main menu manager dot instance dot current color as it is going to be the inactive color and that should be it for our stage and the level button and if there are not any more errors our uh, main menu manager script should be done and also our main menu and let's open up our game manager and the node uh, almost 700 800 lines and let's go inside unity and let's see what parameters we need to add so our main menu manager is fine everything is fine and uh, let's go inside our prefabs our inactive color is going to be our dark color so our black was this and this one should be the inactive one okay so that is the gray there is the text there is the image and there is the button so level doesn't have a button we'll need to attach a button to it color tint let's set it to none uh why can we move it down okay so it is down and we'll reference our button similarly inside our stage uh, by default our stage name is going to be novice a the default color is going to be red the number is going to be one and our button is going to be from our stage and we need to set uh, all of its text individually i mean uh, we didn't directly set at the start so we are going to set up the names individually so let's see what names do we have so now we say is uh, blue blue okay so the blue is not the default one the red is the default one 
so we have our stages uh, the start panel we don't need anything else and also our difficulty panel uh, we'll need to set up our stages uh, the level content is uh, also perfectly set up these are our levels and it should show us 50 levels and uh, let's set up our difficulty panel so as you can see everything is uh, pretty much blue 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 and the text is novice a so we'll need to set it by one two three four five six so the first one was uh, pretty much blue the stage is one uh the second one it's uh, going to be novice b and the color is going to be red hmm, 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 hmm. okay so it was the first one was red uh, let's assign the red and let's rename it to novice a similarly we need to rename its text to novice a and also our number is going to be one so what we changed is we can see in the overrides we changed the name color number and the overall text and similarly we are going to do with the rest of the script and we forgot to change the color it also needs to be red and let's go with the second part so for the second one it's a time consuming task but we have to do it so the color is going to be yellow and the text is going to be no sb okay so it is already changed the number is going to be two and also here it is going to be yellow and the text we need to set it up as no sb and it is looking perfectly bright so do we set our main color to be white or yellow white looks better oh yeah let's just uh, leave it as yellow so this is our light color and after that no sb we are going to see what did we change so we change the image color name color number and that and pretty much we are going to do with that of all, all of our stages so the next one is going to be the green and it is going to have a text of regular a and the color will set to be green and this is going to be three and regular a and similarly here we'll set its color to teal or blue whatever color you want and this is going to be regular b and the color is going to be teal mm, the number it's going to be four and uh, the text is going to be regular b and after that we have three more text which are the advanced expert and master so for the advance uh, the color is going to be not change the stage is going to be five and we'll just uh, use the default color mm, we'll rename the text to advanced then we are going to have for the expert which is going to be the purple color 
uh, which is the six stage and we'll call this export purple and six stage and also exploit here so finally we have our master which is the pink color and again pink here and master and this stage is going to be seven and we also need to change the text which is going to be our master and everything has the prefix uh, perfectly fine so let's hide our difficulty content and so stage has everything this one has everything and let's hit play and we'll see if there are any errors so when we hit play we are able to see our start uh novice a novice b regular a expert and our master level and if we click any of them we are able to go into the gameplay and everything worked perfectly fine and that was it for the main menu we'll start by creating the gameplay scene in the next section